everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of What's Up, Doc. I'm here with Dr. Funkenberry, and I know he knows what's going down. What's up, Dr. Funkenberry? Hello. <laughs> no, what's going on, everyone? Yeah, we got a few things going down. How are you doing this week? I'm good. I'm good. I thought you had a little weird frog in your throat there. I'm glad to hear that uh, same sexy voice coming back. All right. So oh, Lord, yeah. Last week, someone week. called me uh, Dr. Coffinberry for the way my voice sounded. I thought that was kind of funny. Nice, nice. Yeah, so this week, just when we thought the Sandra Bullock story was quieting down and things were getting back to normal, boom, huge bombshell from her. What's happening? Yeah, a few bombshells. Well, first, uh, she, back in January, adopted an African-American baby from New Orleans um, named Louis Bardo Bullock. Um, Named after Louis Armstrong, is that right? I haven't heard that. I was kind of more interested in the old name of Bardo, uh, the way it's spelled B-A-R-D-O. But, yeah, possibly Louis Armstrong. Um, some great shots in People magazine who got the exclusive on it. And I just think it's really, really amazing how that she had, think about this, she had the baby uh, through the Golden Globes, through, through the Oscars, and through this whole situation with Jesse, and no one knew. Even, even some people that were close friends that had contact with Sandra didn't know about this. In this day and age, uh, the whole TMZ thing where they're everywhere, uh, that's kind of amazing. And, and the other bombshell that she dropped um, was uh, that she did file for divorce against Jesse, and she did it in Texas. So th- the reason it's important that it's Texas is that it will probably be done in the next 60 days. It won't drag on as long as California divorces. And Jesse's still holding on for some hope, you know, calling Sonner the love of his life, and he feels like he has a hole in his heart over the whole baby thing. But I don't think she's coming back. And I, I'm very happy for Sandra. I know, I know that we've kind of talked about some miscarriage issues she's had and wanting to have a child. I think it's so great that she adopted someone. I'm glad that no one's really tripping on the color because that's not really what matters at all. She's going to be a great, great single mother, and I'm very happy for her. Yeah, I read uh, a little bit of the People piece, and uh, she said even her stepchildren, which I guess are Jesse's kids, uh, were in on the secret and did not divulge to anybody uh, about about uh, Lewis. So um, hats off to Sandra for keeping everything under wraps. And yeah, that picture of her on the cover, she just looks ecstatic and beaming, and it's it's adorable. It's a great shot. Awesome. Well, on to on to uh, other uh, less happy news and sort of bizarre news: the whole Tito Ortiz and Jenna Jameson drama this week. What happened with that? Wow. Yeah, you know, as soon as the, everything started happening, I knew it was going to get it to be in very ugly he said, she said battle, and that's exactly what happened. You know, from Jenna, the, you know, from Jenna uh, calling in the cops and then TMZ being right there when Tito was being arrested, that was crazy that they were there. And then Jenna, when she came out and got an arm brace, they were all over on that, and she said that, you know, he did hit her, and she seemed really scared and really sad. And then... TMZ, again, everywhere, or police are on their payroll. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, did I say that? Um, and they got a shot of uh, Tito sitting in a jail cell, which was kind of creepy. And then Tito, when he got, got released from jail earlier in the day, Jenna decided to take a trip to Vegas. And during that time, you know, there were some people hitting her up on her Twitter saying that, you know, oh, yeah, hell, yeah, he beat your ass and all that stuff, you know, you know, just because someone has a Twitter account doesn't mean that they have common sense. That thing was stupid. Um, regardless, Tito held a press conference that night where he said he didn't touch Jenna at all and that she's addicted to OxyContin. And Jenna got upset about that, went off on uh, him again, just said he's trying to save his career. But what it had her do was while she was in Vegas, she decided to get tested for drugs, and she passed clear. And it was kind of like it put Tito on a place. Go ahead. Fast forward to today, and we've got both of yeah. them denying anything ever happened. Yeah, I think Jenna, you know, at first I believed Tito, to be honest, and I, I feel really bad about that because he put on a great show at that press conference, tears and all. But um, I believe Jenna, and I think what Jenna is doing is she knows that his UFC contract, if he gets these charges against him, it, it screws up his whole contract, which is worth up to $15 million. So, 
you know, she's playing it cool, he's playing it cool. I don't really see them getting back together, but they're just trying to be like, you know, they remember that they loved each other and this is a bad situation and maybe just split, you know, on, on good terms. They do have two children together. Well, you know. speaking of uh, sort of love-hate relationships, uh, Conan, Coco, is going to be uh, back in the spotlight, already is this week, because he's going to be in an yep. exclusive interview on 60 Minutes on Sunday. But a little bit of that came out today. What did he have to say about his sort of feud with NBC and Jay Leno? Yeah, he wasn't allowed to say anything until after May 1st, but uh, the, the 60 Minutes interview on CBS this Sunday will be on May 2nd, so he's allowed to talk about it. He says if he was in Jay's shoes, that he wouldn't have uh, taken the show back. That if he was in a similar, similar, similar situation and roles were reversed, he wouldn't have done it. He goes, if I had surrendered the Tonight Show and handed it over to somebody publicly and wished them well, and then six months later, that's me, you know. Everyone's got their own, you know, way of doing things. Uh, you know, it's an ugly situation. It's business. It was bad the way NBC handed it handled it. I really think when he left late night with Colin O'Brien and was getting beaten on a regular basis by Craig Ferguson, uh, that NBC was worried. But they tried to make it work and the ratings didn't work and the Leno thing moving into ten o'clock was a complete disaster. You know, NBC handled it poorly, you know, and he knows that. He says that the relationship was toxic and he just needed to go their own separate way. So, you know, he landed on T B S where he'll be working four nights a week. I still understand why he didn't wait for Fox, but you know, I just I think the situation was is that Conan wasn't funny until NBC was on his ass, and then you know the bitter comedian came out and he was hilarious. But uh, you know, I I just wonder when he's gonna get over it. He got forty million dollars, and uh, I'm not feeling bad for him, and he's got a show again. Yeah, he uh, he seems happy. He's out on the road with his comedy tour and. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, he's got the new contract with TBS and a lot of money in his pocket. So I think Conan's uh, going to land on his feet just fine. No problems there. Um, well, we're going to wrap it up. Oh, no, before we wrap it up, uh, you've got a little thing going on with uh, Miss Dame Liz Taylor. What, what happened with all that in this past week? Elizabeth Taylor. Okay, I was told on the down low, but I didn't make it down low. You know, I'm, I'm a new guy still trying to make my waves in it. So you got to kind of sometimes go with stories. And I had a, a story that ended up on my lap about Elizabeth Taylor uh, going to the hospital, voluntarily, mind you. It wasn't for any uh, injuries or heart attack or anything. She's healthy. It's just in her mind it was a psychiatric thing. Um, and she voluntarily checked herself in. And immediately, as soon as I put the story out, you know, I contacted TMZ, I sent the story to CNN. CNN within 15 minutes is debunking the story. However, what I'm noticing is, is that on April 10th, even before Liz was in the hospital, Entertainment Tonight and a few other people were sending out releases that Liz is not in the hospital. This was 10 days before it happened. So I think someone got a little paranoid and jumped the gun because our story didn't hit until April 20th. And I'm hearing from one person now that um, she's all right, she's still planning on going to London. There are some reports that she already is in London. I don't believe that's true. But I will say this, she was in the hospital. It was for voluntary reasons. I think the CNN guy is freaking hilarious for trying to deny it and not really checking its facts. I made sure everything was checked before. Liz will be fine. It was just psychiatric issues, which we don't know. Uh, but I'm glad that she's well, and I just felt that it was important because there's people that care about Liz, and they want to know what's going on with her. And lastly, sorry this is going a little bit long on that, you know, the guy from CNN says that she usually debunks rumors on her Twitter account. I challenged the guy that I said within a week, I guarantee you she doesn't deny this rumor, because she can't, because when, when you're in a psychiatric ward, you have no use of your cell phone. And she has not denied this rumor at all in the past seven days. So just want to say that to CNN. Still a little bit more credible than you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you heard it here first, uh, or at least you heard it first on drfunkenberry.com. Well, whatever is happening uh, with Ms. Taylor, we hope that she is feeling well and uh, that we see her out and about very soon. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in to this week's edition of What's Up, Doc. Have a great weekend. Hey.